can't wait to get a lift someday. Clears pretty damn good. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. Everything with loop is better. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Coverall Joe. I work on cars, I fix them, I customize them, do little odds and ends. And today we'll be working on the Lexus once again. Seeing the previous video, I went ahead and swapped suspension, tires, and brake rotors from my older LS400 to this one. So I can enjoy this one, do my sort of daily have it looking nice, have it riding cool. But that day, I just rushed it, put everything together. I did an initial stance with some camber. It was just all for fun, just to go out with the guys. But to make it more reliable, I have to do adjustments on the camber and toe. So let's go ahead and try to get that fixed. Also, to get more clearance, get a good stance, might have to roll the fenders and the quarter panels. So I've never done that before. I'm gonna give it a shot. I've seen and read a lot online. Shouldn't be that difficult, but let's give it a shot. Never done it, that's what we're here for, to learn, do new things and customize. So let's get to it. So first thing we're gonna do, work on the back, which needs a lot of, lot of adjustments. As you can see right there, we did a nice camber just for it to tuck a little bit but that rubbing life, that low life. So just to make it a little more comfortable and reliable for longer trips, shows or whatever, I gotta fix that rubbing issue. Who's there? Come on, yo. Whoa. Come on, yo. Stay in shorts, it's hot. Get a little dirty, it don't matter. Well, come on. Whoa! Come on, Joe. And you? That's why your name is Coverall Joe. Huh? Your boy get excessively dirty. Well, Helps he does have a point your there. Clothes, keep you clean, it's an image. <sighs> All right, good Joe. Let's suit up. Okay, let's first start by taking this little trim off. I'm gonna try to make it work with it on. If not, I'll just take it off. Now so I'm only gonna roll the top arch of the wheel well, maybe half of it from here to here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these plastic clips. So when I start rolling it, this won't be in the way. I try to keep these two bottom ones. Once I roll this, maybe I can still screw in the trim and keep it on, but we'll find out if we can or not. Get some pliers, try to pull it off. I think they squeeze inwards. Let's see. Uh. One clip off. I just forced it in. Oh, there goes the other one. Seems to be a lot of dirt back here. Oh. Oh, well, got the clips off. Let's go get the tools. And here we have a fender roller. This is obviously useful for rolling fenders. 
It's a neat tool. Never done it before, but pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and uh, install it and start prepping. Let's just play with the adjustments. Make sure we have it in the right position. Okay, seems to work in that hole. A few moments later. Um. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Okay. More adjustments. There we go. That makes a little more sense. Okay, so I got it there. Let's go ahead and put some of these lug nuts. Three should be more than enough. All right, now that we got the, the jig in place, more or less. One important thing I've seen everybody and read online, point to do is apply some heat. That way you avoid any cracks on the paint, which to be honest, this car is gonna get some body work done in the future, but just for the ease of it and for it to look as good as possible now, we'll go ahead with the heat gun, just warm it up and then keep on rolling it little by little. Okay, well, I think it rolled enough. I'm not running any aggressive fitment. It's about three quarters of the weight rolled in. I don't need it completely flat or completely rolled in. So we'll try that for now. Let's go ahead and take this off. Let's go ahead and do the other side. better clears pretty damn good check the other side beautiful now that i got more space i can actually take so take off some of the negative camber and get it a little straighter that way my tires last a little longer because even though it looks pretty nice i am still got a daily ish this car so let's be smart about it i'll take off some camber so next up is the adjustments got dark on me so I'll continue tomorrow. Where I like to start is by loosening the arms locking nuts. These, These nuts. nuts. <laughs> Got it. <he>. Got it. <he. laughs> right. Loosen the two locking nuts. What I want to achieve is I want to strain it up a little bit. So that means I have to go in to go shorter on this camber arm. But to achieve that, let's see what side. This is always confusing to me beneath the car. I need to screw in more. Okay, stop there for now. Let's go ahead and loosen the, the toe arm. Oh, look at that, it's loose. Damn, Joe, you left this loose. Same with the toe, I wanna go in. It's oh, not easy. Can't wait to get a lift someday. Okay, so leave her halfway to have leave it halfway to have more adjustments. Get that boy out. 
fucking managed to. After giving it a little lubricant and pipe wrench therapy, managed to break it loose and clean the threads. Let's go back and install it. Okay, now we got that. I'm ready to get adjusted. Let's go set up the do it yourself alignment tool. So this is an old technique to do alignment at home. Some string or thin rope and just tie it down from bumper to bumper. I like to use jack stands, for instance. Put one right here, put one over here. Put some old brake rotors just to weigh it down. That way you can put the ropes on tension and you can get a close enough alignment where you can drive it test it out before you go get a professionally aligned. Let's get this rope. Tie at one end. Put the rotor on it. You wanna keep it at tension. Let me show you guys. It's pretty much like that. Jack stand, the rope. Go ahead and lay that brake rotor. Same on this side. The idea is to get one the size to touch, like barely, like that one. And then see how this one has a space. If you have it tension enough, it should get you close enough. Here you can see the toe is this way. So I gotta push this back end out or this front end in with the toe. Now this part is tedious. We do adjustments, we do it by eye, put the car down, check the rope, and then we do adjustments from there. So for the home alignment, I have to kick this out a little more. Look at the rope. Can go a little bit more. Okay, that looks uh, fairly good. Let's go ahead and tighten the bolt, the nut. Let's tie on the toe one too. Okay. Let's fine tune it with the toe arm. That looks way better. Here you can see how the rope is touching that edge and touching this edge. So it should be straight enough. Now camber is a whole different story. That would do by eye. But all you gotta do is check clearance here. And of course, just visually. Let's lower it, see what happens. Now this is on the ground. We'll verify it. So let's do this side now. enough another good tool to have when you're doing your DIY alignment it's one of these camber gauges or camber tool like I said just to get it in the ballpark so at least you're not dragging tires before you get your professional alignment so this is how I check it. First I try to get the, the tire center open. Put this right in the middle. You can do it with a tire off, but mine fits there pretty good. Just make sure this one is in the middle, this bubble to align it. And then you look in inside and see the bubble that has a camber. Now you take it off. But I'm moving the bottom dial. I come to this side, try to get the center exposed. Stick it in the rotor. Make sure you align the, the first little bubble 
that's good right there and we have set three this one kind of come in for negative camber about two about two measurements of this so that'd be from there to here so I, i'm not going too aggressive on the camber i'll just the one that has more camber to break it down some and then have them pretty much similar well i have it at one so now both are equal Well, I got it as uh, aligned as possible. I think it came out pretty good. Um, I definitely took out a lot of camber. For now, I just want it to be more reliable. I want the tires to last a little longer. But it's one big problem. I don't like how the stands look now, or at least height-wise. As you can see, it has a pretty decent gap. And now I'm debating if to lower a little more, just so it tucks in a little bit better. Now they have the edge rolled. Well, that should give me plenty of clearance, but I will having to have too much camber. So I am gonna play a little bit with the height, drop it another half inch, three quarters of an inch. See how that looks and go from there. zero